Has the U.S. real estate market managed to navigate a soft landing? It sure looks like that to me. For several weeks in a row, inventory has been rising at a slower pace than we'd projected even a few weeks ago. In fact, we probably should revise lower our projection for where available inventory finishes 2022. The, the economy has been strong and unemployment is remarkably low. So even with a shrinking GDP, the American homeowner is in, in great shape. There's no panic selling. We saw some sellers rushing to list in May and June, anticipating that things might get worse. Um, and I'm hearing from anecdotes from, from brokers around the country with with stories about that. But that only means that those who rush to sell in May and June implies that inventory will grow less quickly this fall because they've already sold. Uh, these dynamics are what we're watching in this week's Altos Research Market video. Every week, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country. We analyze all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in that data, and we make it available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. If you aren't using Altos Market Reports with your clients, your buyers and sellers right now, it might be a good time to step up. Go to altosresearch.com and book a free consult with our team because everybody is worried about what's happening right now. And they need you to help them see clearly. So I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the CEO of Altos Research. And here's what we're looking at for the week of August 8th, 2022. Available inventory of homes for sale rose by less than 1% this week to 544,000 single family houses unsold on the market. Inventory is rising, but rising less quickly than it did in the second quarter. And also actually less quickly than recent August of the last several years. So in June this year, inventory was rising 68% per week. In July, it was three to 4% per week. This week was less than 1% inventory gains. So this is a normal seasonal slowing. In a sense, it's not notable at all that inventory rises less now than in, in June and July. Uh, the reason, though, that why this slowing inventory growth is the headline now is because we we kind of all expected inventory to just keep climbing or, or feared that inventory growth would accelerate. So in many of the hottest U.S. housing markets, demand stopped abruptly in the second quarter. And you can understand why people would be afraid of a market crash in those conditions. But man, it sure doesn't appear that that's happening. Uh, what you can see here now is that we have 32% more homes on the market now than we did last year at this time. We still have fewer homes on the market now than we did in August of 2020 and 40% fewer homes than 2019. In most of the country, we still have a shortage of homes available for buyers. Kind of seems remarkable to say that given how the year has gone, but that's where we are. What's hard to see in this chart is, is the change in the slope at the far right side. It sure looks to me like we've turned the corner for the season. But if we look at the same data in this year over year format, we can see that the last few weeks, how the slope has changed. This is a simple forecast model for inventory uh, for each week for the rest of the year. The solid dark line here, dark red line here, is this year so far. The dotted line then plays out each week for the rest of the year. And you can see we're still allowing for some weekly jumps uh, the, next week and the rest of August. But if we don't see those jumps, then we're going to have to revise downward the yearly forecast. The bottom line here is that inventory is not growing particularly quickly anymore. We'll probably end the year with about 535,000 single-family homes on the market. I shared this 535,000 number a few weeks ago, and a lot of really smart people told me it was too low. Uh, but now suddenly it kind of looks too high, maybe. So we'll see what next week brings us. Uh, by the way, this week, 
We have our August webinar on Thursday, August 11th at 10 a.m. Pacific. In it, we'll spend more time on this surprising change in the inventory trend and what to expect for the rest of the year. If you have buyers and sellers who are trying to figure out and navigate this market this fall, you should join us. Uh, one thing to note, which we'll get uh, an opportunity to spend time on, is how many local markets are behaving differently. We'll check on some of those markets, some of the really hot ones. We'll see if they look better or worse than the national average right now. Uh, if you're having these conversations with your clients, click the registration link in the description below. Join us Thursday, this Thursday, August 11th, 10 a.m. Pacific for the hour-long webinar. We dive into all the data. Uh, so you can see the slowdown in the inventory growth in our immediate sales tracker. The, note the sharp drop in new listings and in the immediate sales volume after the 4th of July holiday this year. You can see the far left, the last few bars in the far left, far right side of the chart here. Uh, I've pointed out that the immediate sales are the defining characteristic of the pandemic housing boom. But since that 4th of July holiday, you can see this abrupt drop in new listings and the drop in those that go into contract immediately. So demand, you can see the demand slowing, but you can also see the supply pulling back. So the dark part of each bar here are the listings that stay on the market more than a few days. That's the normally what new listings look like. The light part are the part that go into contract essentially immediately. Only 16,000 of those this week. And you can see how they've dropped very, very abruptly as we rolled into July and now August. Meanwhile, home prices are holding firm. Uh, that's another sign that the market may be navigating a soft landing. The median price of single family homes in the U.S. is just under $450,000 this week. That's roughly where it's been for a month. The price of the new listings is down to 399900 this week. And that decreases, looks like mostly seasonal action. The See the light red line here. Each, each year, the, the new listings price moves back in the late summer and fall, which we've seen right now. Uh, Percentage-wise, the price of new listings has not retreated that much. It's not unusual. Uh, and you can see that we're well past the insanity of the beginning of the year where, where the light red line was spiking so quickly each week. So this implies that while the most, like the, the most egregiously overpriced homes, those are not selling and we're not seeing those like get those sellers try to try, tie in the market that way. But in general, sellers and buyers are finding equilibrium in most parts of the country right now. Uh, it looks like we're seeing a slowdown in the growth of price reductions too. So more homes are cutting their price each week. Uh, the time to sell a home is climbing, of course, from record few, record low time to, to climbing back to normal. And so price reductions always climb as the days on market climb, and they climb this time of year. Price reductions always climb in the third and and fourth quarter before settling back. So as the market shifted, many sellers were surprised and had to cut their asking prices very quickly. Uh, and so we had this big, steep increase in price reductions from the record lows to, to the highest, actually highest number in years. Uh, and I expect that by September, the rate cut, the, the rate of price reductions will have leveled off though. So that's the dark red line here. That's this year. And we'll have 40-something percent of homes on the market with, with price reductions by, by September. Um, that's a lot compared to recent years, but it's not frighteningly high. Uh, and if this dark red line were still going vertical each week, that would be alarming. But it looks like it's starting to slow down just a bit. So we're currently at, at almost 38% of the market has had a price cut. Next week, we'll see 39 then 40%. So sometime in October, we'll probably hit that peak before resetting for the holidays. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's going to 50%, for example. So that tells us that if you're a buyer right now, you have more options than you did at the start of the year, but the current signs don't show the market changing dramatically from here. Mortgage rates have fallen off their highs. Employment is super high. People who want to buy are buying. 
Uh, this seems very much like a soft landing to me. It'd be a real surprise if, if the market pulls it off. So we'll take the full hour on Thursday to discuss these trends and much more. We, there's a, a link to register for that webinar in the description below, the August webinar. Click that to join us. As always, though, if you need to have these conversations with your buyers and sellers right now, you should go to altosresearch.com and sign up to get the data in your hands and in their hands today. Local data for every zip code in the country. The market is changing much more quickly than most buyers and sellers can keep up. It's quickly changing more quickly than I can keep up, frankly. So you, they need you to be their voice of expertise right now. Join us at altosresearch.com. Okay, that's all the data we have time for this week. See you Thursday, more next week.